What a beautiful day. The last time I was out here, we had a storm. I was just hitting this place super hard. And this morning I'm coming out, it's a lot colder, but it's still, it's like really, really, really still out here. And there's so much fresh snow. The trees are beautiful. The snow on the trees, I mean, if I, I wish you guys could just see this up close because the sun coming through the trees is just, it's just stunning because the sun is so orange at this time of year. It just sits on the horizon. It's so low. We're almost at the shortest day of the year right now. And the sun is just like hovering right above the horizon. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go in and start that stove right away. And in a previous video, I had, um, I had taken some birch, some birch, some birch bark, some birch bark off of a tree in the woods. And uh, I got a comment from someone saying, hey, you can't be doing that. And I agree, taking birch off of a healthy tree is probably not the best idea unless you're in a situation where you really need that, that bark. But the tree that I've been harvesting from is completely dead. I could probably push it over. In fact, let's go in and let's just take this birch tree that's rotten and take as much bark off of that as we can and we'll go in and get that fire started right away. So this tree is 100% dead. Um, it's just rotten and I'm wondering if I just give it a good yank will it come down and there's quite a bit of bark on this. It even it sounds hollow. It really does. So all this bark is so usable. And uh, I do have everything in my um, tent ready to go for a fire. But I just decided I'd start today off getting this. A very usable uh, fuel source. And uh, let's see here. Let's see. Oh, right in the head. <laughs> Look at that. I did not expect that to happen. This thing cracked off right in the middle of the tree. That's how dead it is. Wow. Look at that. Awesome. Okay. Well, there's one part. Quite a bit of bark on that. I mean, if that's not evidence that that tree is dead, I don't know what is. And there's this guy beside it, and he's... Look at that. I mean, it's just rotten. So, yeah, I'm taking advantage of this stuff, and I have a feeling that'll light beautifully and get that fire started perfectly. Well, as you guys can see, it's minus 27 in the tent right now. Celsius, that's like minus, almost minus 20 Fahrenheit. So it's very cold, very cold in this tent, and I need to get that fire going as soon as possible. Okay, I got some of that birch and uh, I'm going to break it up a little bit and what I have, I'm going to lay down a couple of pieces of wood to get a good base like I like to do. Even when it's a bit wet, this stuff will light nicely.
as you guys can see, this stove smokes like crazy when it starts up. And uh, look at that. It's all going to go with the door. I'm not too worried about it. The door is open. But it smokes like crazy. But when I close this door, it's just going to go out the chimney. There we go. I'm frosted up pretty good. My hat, my beard, my eyebrows and eyelashes, not that bad. There's been times when I've come out here and I'm completely caked and it takes a while to get it off. But pretty good for minus 27, minus 20. And while it's still minus 25 in here right now, Celsius, I am going to take off this jacket and just go with the wool and allow for the heat of the stove to get closer to my body because if I have this jacket on while that wood stove is heating up, I'm actually not allowing for the heat to get to my body. So it's uh, something I actually learned when I lived in Nunavut. You go into a place that's warm, get your gear off right away and the warmth will come to your body. Now what I want to do is check this sleeping bag and I'm checking for mouse droppings because I know there's a mouse somewhere around this tent and I know it's been inside. There's been evidence. So I want to check this bag because the last thing I want to do, listen to that bag. That is, that's cold. That is cold. I just want to make sure there's no droppings in here. I can open it. Because if there are, I don't want to sleep in it. You don't want to get too close to mouse droppings, I know that. And it's good. So, let that puff out. And I don't even think I'll close it. I'll let some of the heat from the stove go into that sleeping bag. but. I've never heard my sleeping bag like that before. That's cold. Oh. I think that log is frozen. Wow. Can't even get this to stick in. Either that or I've just done it one too many times. You know it's cold when your axe, there we go won't stick in your chopping block. So this axe right here is a Husqvarna axe and it's a splitting axe and I absolutely love this thing. I got it last year, it's a Christmas present and I love it. I'm telling you, my Fiskars isn't doing that.
No effort. Excellent. I'm pretty careful around my fingers. I know some people like to like hold it and whack it. And this, I can't. I'm worried I'm just gonna take my hand off. Especially with an ax like this. Just so good. Well, it's been an interesting start to this day. I've got cold toes and uh, I decided to go with my smaller boots today because sometimes I get of this mindset where it's like, oh, I'm going to be around a wood stove all day long. And, you know, I'll be able just to warm up my feet near the wood stove. And normally I wear a pair of minus 100 rated to minus 100 boots and uh, no one's ever been in minus 100 <laughs> so I don't even know how they know if those boots still work at minus 100 but uh, these ones that I'm wearing now are like a minus 40 boot and you know when you're in minus 27 it's uh, minus 20 Fahrenheit um, your toes will get chilly they just they will and I think minus 40 just means you won't get frostbite in the things. The tent is slow to warm up today. It's uh, zero degrees right now and I've had that fire going for about, um, I would say 40 minutes. So yes, it has warmed up 27 degrees uh, Celsius. And um, so when it's zero, by the way, zero degrees Celsius is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's the freezing point. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just been a slow warm up. I got a little bit of a, a chill in my, my tippy toes. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm used to this, this tent getting cranking like right away because it hasn't been this cold uh, for me in a long time since last year. So I need to adapt, definitely I need to adjust. Anyway, this hot instant coffee, because I always drink instant coffee, will definitely do some good for me. And um, after I finish this, I'll get to work. Just decided I'm gonna warm up my feet by the stove. That's what the stove's for. And I already said I need to take off some layers and expose my, my body to the heat. If I wanna really warm up. So the same applies for my feet. I do have some snow here on the ground. So I'm trying not to pick up much of that. But these insoles, I'm gonna warm those up too. That's important. Because these things will hold the cold in them because they're insulated. Just like that. By the way, this right here, you guys see this? This is my honey bucket. And so, a lot of people ask about using the washroom out here. I don't have an outhouse, but I do have a honey bucket. And uh, I have some bags that are uh, designed for going to the bathroom. You open them up, and it's like they're they're ziplocked super tight and then um, there's like this some sort of chemical I guess some sort of powder in it that kind of like gels everything together and you seal it up and it doesn't give off too much of a scent and uh, we at our dump 
we have a, an area there's a giant container there that will that just takes honey bags so you go to the dump and you're there you know you just say hey I'm going in with my honey bags and they say go to the honey bag section you go there and you toss them into the container and you're done so I'm, I'm not you know polluting around here and I wouldn't say polluting but I'm not using the area like to go to the bathroom I do have a pea tree and uh, every camp should have a pea tree and I'll use the pea tree all day long and but for everything else honey bucket This is easily the biggest tree I've ever gotten around here. Um, I'm allowed to uh, harvest dead standing trees. I have a permit for around this area. This thing was a beast to cut down for me because it was just filled with dead branches like this one, which is gone now. But, yeah, you got to put in a lot of work when there's a lot of branches. You kill a lot of gas on your chainsaw doing something like that. But this tree is easily a couple days, you know, two or three days of wood at the tent. So, very, very worth it. It weighs a ton. Wow. I think I'm going to trim it. And then I'm going to cut it in half and put it in. Hard to see when these glasses fog up. By the way, I'm on ice. So I'm just cutting straight down through the ice right now. Oh. Yep. Much more manageable. I've got this long stuff here that's really full of branches. I'm gonna get it out. I'm gonna cut this stuff up. Not right now, I'm just gonna leave it right here. And I'm gonna bring it back to my camp and use it for my outdoor pit. Because I do have to feed both.
That is easily the most amount of wood I've ever harvested around here. Just four trees did that. I plan on spending quite a bit of time out here over Christmas, so I need as much wood as I can get. Big chunks of ice on the tent. I gotta clear that off. Although, I bet you all of that snow on top provides great insulation. It's just it gets heavy, so I definitely want to get it off the roof. But uh, yeah, I was just thinking that would make amazing insulation. It's just unfortunate that it just weighs down the tent. Let's see if that propane's working. Yes. Nice. Okay. Today, I'm using margarine. I'm doing it. It's been years since I used margarine. Here, so many of you told me I was killing myself every time I had a little bit of margarine. Just living on the edge today. Soak up all that margarine. Turn down nice and low. Well, it's getting pretty dark already. It's like three o'clock in the afternoon. This sandwich is gonna be amazing. I love grilled ham and cheese sandwiches. And I love just like noodles. Nothing beats a, well, I call it soup and sandwich. Mid-afternoon snack. I'll get back to work after this and then uh, I'm gonna make a delicious supper later. I can't wait. This is just like a primer. Okay, lots of cheese. So what about margarine? Do any of you out there use margarine? <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, I try to use butter as much as possible because I think it tastes a whole heck of a lot better and I feel better about eating butter. But margarine every once in a while, like I can't see it being that bad. Um, a lot of people when I first started this channel a few years back would just hammer me for the margarine. But like I grew up eating the stuff. Maybe that's why I am the way I am eating margarine all the time growing up. But uh, yeah, it's like it's, it doesn't burn like butter. That's one thing for sure. 
I know a lot of people just say, but you know, margarine is, is just chemicals, but I, I don't think it's that bad. And it makes for a delicious grilled ham and cheese sandwich. So, I don't know, let me know. Margarine or butter, and is margarine really that bad? One of my subscribers said, man, you got to put lights on your snowmobile. <laughs> I said, yeah, I do. That's a great idea. And uh, I'm just making it up here as I go along. I'm gonna open the door just in case it is a bit smoky. Cooking a burger, homemade burger tonight. Man, been waiting for this a while. That is for sure. So, 
guacamole, mayonnaise, ketchup, mustard, hamburger with Montreal steak spice on it, extra old cheddar cheese, and some Parmesan and garlic kettle cooked chips. That's what I'm having for supper tonight. That burger is massive. Whoa. <laughs> it's like a it's like a pounder. Oh my. It's not rare. It's perfect. Juicy. Mmm. Alright, well that's it. I'm going to bed. And listen to this. Remember when I showed up here today? Sounded like a chip bag being opened. But now it's nice. I'm looking forward to sleeping in this. It's my first time this year sleeping in my sleeping bag that I love, that I adore. It's like minus 30, minus 35. I'm not sure the exact rating for this thing. All I know is that if I let that stove get cool tonight, I'm going to be super toasty in this sleeping bag. Um, I think it's minus 21 Celsius tonight. That's what it's expected to be. So it's warmed up. You're looking at six degrees that it's warmed up since I arrived when it was minus 27. And so minus 20, that's just, yeah, minus 20. <laughs> I got to reference the, the thermometer. Uh, minus 20 is um, just below zero Fahrenheit. So that's what we're looking at tonight here. And uh, yeah, good day. It was a great day. I'll see you guys in the morning. That is nice heat there. Wow. Oh, this fire's been going for a long time. It's 4 a.m. right now. And I need my glove. And now I'm gonna load this thing and hopefully. Oh, she's smoking good there. Wonder why. I want this thing to uh, to go now until I wake up because it's only four. And it sounds like it's pretty crappy out there. I don't want to go out and do anything right now at 4 a.m. in this weather. That could be creosote too. I'm not used to um, hearing such wind while trying to sleep. And I know it might not sound that strong on the microphone, but it is. It's, it's like it's... Yeah, it's like it's rocking the tent. You can't feel it move because the tent's so solid, but hear the fabric just twisting in the wind. Oh, I can see my breath. It's making for an interesting night. This tent, man, I'm telling you. I don't have to worry about carbon monoxide in this tent because there's such a breeze coming in from underneath of the door. It's just like whipping cold air underneath. And I got the, the back window open just a little bit to make sure, but wow, there's a lot of fresh air flowing through this tent right now, like a lot. I'm gonna close this down such a beautiful bed of coals in there right now. I'm going to close it down and I'm just going to let the temperature remain what it is around 10 degrees Celsius which is around 50 degrees Fahrenheit. 
And if I can keep it at that temperature, that'll be perfect. degrees Celsius in here that's almost 90 degrees Fahrenheit and it's uh, almost nine o'clock in the morning I just went outside and it's brutal out there the wind is really strong and the wind is very cold I mean it just cuts right through you so uh, it's there's a big contrast between what's going on out there and what's going on in here and I gotta say I had just an awesome sleep last night I'm really happy with how it went. Sleeping bag, I'm telling you. I don't care that it's 30 degrees in here. I want to be inside of a minus 30 sleeping bag when it's 30 degrees Celsius inside the tent. That is for sure. That wind is brutal. It's very cold on the skin. So this is my, my new site that I'm slowly chipping away at. And there's this deck here. And I had high hopes that it would be 14 by 14 because I have on the way a Russian bear tent. And I'm really excited about that because I want to have it here for the winter so I can have two different spots all winter long. And uh, this chair is wooden. <laughs> I thought it was plastic. Uh, and it, the base of the big tent that I have coming, the bear tent, is uh, 14 feet. It's, it's circular, right? And it's 14 feet, I guess, at every point in the circle. And I can tell you right now, this is not 14. I really wanted just to plop it here for a few days while I worked up at the tent, the tent that's on this site that I'm gonna tear down. But it's not gonna fit. I brought measuring tape, but there's no way. Oh, 12. It's like 12, almost 12 and a half feet. Oh, so close. Twelve and a half by 12. Every time I come to camp over the next four or five trips, I'm taking something out of here. And today I'm taking some mattresses that are going to the dump. They're really old, they're really well used, and they have mice droppings on them because mice have loved being in this tent over the last year or so. Actually, I don't know how long. They probably loved it forever, but... Uh, so I just need to get that stuff out, throw it in my boggin, and bring it with me. And it goes to the dump with the honey bag.
Now, I could potentially put the tent on this platform. This platform is really solid, but it's not 14 by 14 either. Twelve. Uh, okay, so if I'm going to use this, I think it's easily 14 feet long. That's a 12 foot tent, and it's you can see there's an extension here. So what I might need to do this winter is extend the platform two feet over, and that way I should be able to get the tent in on. <laughs> well, as you guys can see. This mattress is gross. It's got mold stains all over it. So it's coming out. And the one down here on the uh, on the futon frame, it's got quite a bit of mouse droppings on it. So I just need to be careful when I'm taking it out because I know mouse droppings they're not good for you. You don't want to be messing around with mouse droppings. So I'm going to keep this door open nice and ventilated and get these mattresses out of here right away. be all I can take today. My bogging isn't huge. Even if I can't take them all, I'm going to set this one out here and just leave it out here and uh, I'll get it next trip. Yeah, the mice like it in that tent. This tent is on uh, cement blocks. The platform is, which is great. And out back here, what is this? There's some lumber. I mean, it's old stuff. I gotta be careful here, there might be nails. But yeah, there's, look, that's a, that's a two by 10 there. Four by fours, all kinds of good stuff. So, and I have a nice amount of wood at the house too. Lumber that I can bring out. So, I don't know, any ideas on how to extend that? I, I kind of see it in my head how I do it, but I've never done it. I've never extended a, a platform or a deck in my life. So if you guys have done that and you know how to do it easily, I'd love to hear it. things are like giant kites you can see on this guy here right there the mice burrowed holes down in this foam pad I bet you that was cozy If I had my old bargain with me, this would be a cinch. 
But I've given up on that old bargain for this season. It's heavy. Well, taking the wind in the face gives you a really frosty beard and a really runny nose. You try to catch it as best you can, and then it goes down on the mustache a little bit. And uh, you can see it doesn't take long. Just because I'm breathing, right? And so the condensation comes out and uh, it just freezes on my beard. So there's an advantage to having the beard. Like I could feel the wind on my cheeks is biting right now. But on my chin, I'm not feeling much at all. My upper lip, not much. Right here, it's fine, and right here, it's fine. And it's not frosted here, because there's no condensation, there's no breath coating that part of my face, and then freezing. So, it, while it's warm though, kind of hurts. I was like, you know, when you stretch your skin a little bit, it's like pulling your hair out of your face. So, there's a little, uh, little good and a little bad to it, but. I uh, I like the look. I like that frosty look. Looks like, uh, well, some people think it looks like mini wheats, frosted mini wheats. Get that margarine in there. It's gonna be amazing. Oh, baby. I gotta fill up on coffee for my next trip. So this will be coming home with me. I usually get like three three trips out of one of these full of coffee. Alright, taste test. Just mixing it up. A smoky Extra old cheddar cheese, scrambled eggs, salt and pepper. That is good. Oh man. Thick chunks of cheese. Oh, I can feel the margarine coating my lips right now. It's that good. Mmm. Anyway, this trip has been amazing. Thanks so much to everybody who watched up to this point. If you made it to this point, I'm, all, I'm always super thankful of the people that make it to this point because I know how it is on YouTube. Sometimes you start watching a video and you go, ah, that's not for me, and you, you move on. Uh, so for those that made it this far, thanks so much. It means a lot to me. And I am, I'm talking to you right now. Those of you who are watching this moment, I'm talking to you. Uh, so thanks so much. And if you like this video, please hit like. That's a, that's a huge help to a YouTuber. Um, YouTube loves the like button, so yeah, why not? Why not do that if you like the if you like the video and subscribe if you want to see more of this and my journey, my adventures over there as I try to figure out that new camp this winter. Yeah, more videos coming soon. I can't wait. It's been a great one, and I'm gonna enjoy this. I'm gonna head home and spend the day with my daughter. So thanks so much for watching. I'll be back really soon. Mm -hmm.